The weekly timer special function is a seven day clock with three CAM settings on it. The CAMs are analogous to the old fashioned electromechanical time switch, but with the restriction that each CAM can only be set on and off once in a 24 hour period. Setup parameters are as follows. We have CAM1, CAM2, CAM3, and they can be used in any combination. So we'll set up CAM2 for Saturday and Sunday. We'll enable the on time, we'll enable the off time. We'll set it to come on at 0800 and to go off at 0930. We can OK that. We'll see that the parameters have updated here for CAM2. We'll run the simulation. We'll adjust the simulation clock. First checking the day of the week. So it's set for Sunday. We'll set the time at 07, 59 and 55 seconds. Apply that. Watch the time on the status bar and in three seconds the output should turn on. We can now adjust the simulation time to 09, 29 and 55 seconds. Apply that. Four, three, two, one and off. We can now schedule some action for the weekdays. We'll Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Remove the disable. Turn on at six. And we'll switch off at 1800. Apply that. And we'll see the update immediately here on CAM1, CAM2 as before. And we can finally add in a Friday night special, remove the disable, and we'll say 20 hundred hours to 2300 and apply that. And the parameters update here. For working across midnight, we'll need to set a separate off times on the second cam. So returning our Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we will uninhibit the on time, so 2300, and we're going to switch off on Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, Thursday morning, Friday and Saturday. And this time we want to use this and we'll set it for 1 a.m. Okay, that, our times have updated and we can run our simulation and check operation. So we'll set our clock, we'll check the day, it's a Wednesday, that's fine. We'll set the time to 23, nope, 22, 59 and 55 seconds. Apply. Four, three, two, one, and on. We'll check it on the following morning at midnight. It's still on and we'll do five seconds before one o'clock. Apply that and three, two, one and off. So that's all working fine. The weekly timer also has the pulse output mode, uh, which we've enabled in this situation. And what's going to happen here is on Monday to Thursday, we're going to get a single one shot pulse at 1500 hours. On Friday, we're going to get it at 1400 and on Saturday and Sunday be 1200. Now let's say we want to fill a tank once a day at those times. Well, this will only give us a pulse, so that's no good. So we'll stretch it out, we'll use a latching relay.
and we'll add in another input for the tank full level. We'll connect the tank full to reset the action here. We'll use the weekly clock to set and wire the output as shown there. So with this arrangement here, anytime we get a pulse, we'll set the RS function block, turning on the output, and when the tank full signal is received, we'll reset the function block, turning off the output. So no matter how much has been drawn from the tank in the intervening period, it should always fill up to the level switch. One final point to note is the three cams are executed in sequence. Cam one is calculated first, cam two, and then CAM3. So if there's a conflict in the CAM timing here, the last one will win. Just bear it in mind. The yearly timer is the next of the timer special functions, and it's rather unusual, has some interesting features. The first of these is the recurrence pattern. It allows us to set up a yearly or a monthly scheduled event over a range of years ending in 2099, which should outlast the logo itself. Just one thing to watch here, these radio buttons uh, behave a little oddly. We can switch from yearly to monthly, but we can't switch back unless we turn off monthly and then it defaults back to yearly and we can disable both and that has an effect on how the schedule operates. In yearly mode we can schedule the output on on a month and day and off on another month and day. In the monthly mode we can schedule only the day of the month the events happen and a further feature on the timer is the use of the pulse output. So when we select pulse output, the output will turn on just for a single scan of the code execution on the month and day or day specified in the configuration. Now, obviously a demonstration of this is impractical due to the times involved. So instead we will look and review the online documentation. Documentation is aging a little. This goes back to 2008 to 2011. But in example one, we can see we've got a yearly schedule has been selected. The start date is 1st of June 2000, ending on the 31st of August 2099. And we can see that it will turn on for three months every year. So that's fairly straightforward. Example two is yearly, but the pulse output has been selected in this case. So we just get a single pulse on the 15th of March in this case, and it's up to our logic to determine when to turn off the whatever this uh, triggers. Note here that the end date is just asterisked out, but we can select the number of years that this will execute. Example three, we have yearly selected, but we've set the off date to finish in 2010. So we can see that it executes in 2008, 2009, 2010, and never again. Example four is yearly. We've got pulse output selected, so the parameters are the same except for the pulse. And we see that we get a single pulse on each of the three months here where we had a three monthly pulse on the previous example. I demonstrated that the radio buttons can actually be toggled both off and when we do that we have a single event timing. So this could be useful for some feature that we know is going to expire on a certain date 
and we want it to run for several years. It could also be used for something like a forced service reset or planned obsolescence. So in this case, we just set the start date and the end date. Example six, we have monthly not selected, yearly not selected, and pulse output is turned on. So that means it's just going to fire once when this date is reached. Example seven is yearly, and this is showing an event or a schedule crossing the year boundary, first of January. So we can see that the event turns on on the 15th of December in 2008. It's scheduled off on the 7th of January 2010. So for 2008, it will turn on. 2009, when it reaches the uh, 7th of January, it will turn off. Repeat again on 2009, December, turning off in January 2010 and will never reoccur. And example eight monthly, it is to fire on the first of every month, starting in 2008, and finish on the fifth of every month on 2010. So that will come on for the first to the fifth of the month. If you need specific schedules in the time of day as well. So for example, it was to come on on the first of the month, but at 8 a.m. you would do that by adding in a weekly timer after the yearly timer. And the combination would allow you to set various specific times. Mm -hmm.